ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech the best of words are the speech and the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa khayru al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umur muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things when you really invent into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything when you really invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٌ ضَلَالَةٌ And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٌ فِي النَّارِ Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدٍ My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, again, we're preparing, hoping to reach the month of Ramadan. The preparation that the Sahaba رضي الله عنهم وارضاهم, they used to prepare five months for. We are now less than, what? Three weeks away, Two, 20 days, 19 days away, and Allah knows best. But it requires preparation so that we can benefit the most from that month. So we can recharge our batteries and get on that right path. So this preparation has many aspects that need to be addressed. But for this week, I want us to remember and get ready to make our lives built upon remembering what we're about to discuss today. The reminder of something basic, yet a foundation we constantly forget, we constantly get distracted from, that we ignore many of times, or we deny or we just fail to realize. Observing others and observing myself, we're constantly saying, I need, I need, I need, and they're all things in this dunya. They're all things from this life. But without a doubt, in all reality and all truth, we only need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And clearly Allah has no need for any of us, nor any of His creation, or anything for that matter. Allah says, إِن تَكْفَرُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَنْكُمْ وَلَا يَرْضَى لِعِبَادِهِ الْكُفْرِ وَإِن تَشْكُرُوا يَرْضَهُ لَكُمْ وَلَا تَزِرُوا وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى ثُمَّ إِلَى رَبِّكُمْ مَرْجِعُكُمْ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ Allah says what means, if you disbelieve, then verily, Allah is not in need of you. If you choose to disbelieve, you ain't hurting Allah. You're only hurting yourself. Then verily, Allah is not in need of you. He likes not disbelief for His slaves. And if you are grateful by being believers, then He is pleased therewith with you. No bearer of burdens shall bear the burden of another. No one will bear the burden of somebody else's sin. Then to your Lord is your return. So He will inform you what you used to do. And verily Allah is the all-knower of that which is in your chest, in your breast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, يَسْأَلُهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ هُوَ فِي شَأْنِ Allah says in Surah Ar-Rahman, what means whoever is in the heavens and the earth, they beg of Allah, they need Allah. They can only live by Allah's permission every day. He has a matter to bring forth. Every day some people are honored. Every day some people are disgraced. Every day some people are given life. Every day some people have life taken from them. So just remember when you turn to other than Allah, when in need, 
And we're not talking about help me fix my car or change my tire or move from one house to another. We're not talking about those things. But even in those things, your reliance, your trust should be that Allah will allow someone to be able to help you. But when in need, when in need of help, when needing guidance, when needing comfort, when needing protection, all those true human needs, then know yeah, you must turn to Allah. Because if you turn to shaitan through the haram, through the muharramat, through the forbidden things, if you turn to shaitan to get some comfort, some relief, through music and alcohol and drugs, gambling, violence, whatever it may be, when you turn to shaitan, you have lent him your soul. You have given him your soul. And when the time comes for shaitan to be blamed, when Allah questions you, say, He told me to do it. He whispered me to do it. He tempted me to do it. Shaitan is going to step back. And he's not going to be there for you. Allah says, لَقَدَ ضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدِ جَاءَنِي وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَضُولًا Allah says what means that he indeed led me astray when the person, the human will say that he, shaitan, indeed led me astray from the reminder from the Qur'an, from the book of Allah and all that it calls to. After it had come to me, and shaitan, Satan, is ever a deserter to man in his hour of need. He ain't going to be there for you. Blaming him will do you no good. Actually, he will say, أَنَا بَرِيْءٌ مِّنْ كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِذْ قَالَ لِلْإِنسَانِ أَكْفُرْ فَلَمَّا كَفَرَ قَالَ إِنِّي بَرِيْءٌ مِّنْ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهُ رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ Because shaitan... It is said of him, or Allah says in Surah Al-Hashar, He says, just like with shaitan, when he tells mankind to disbelieve, then when mankind disbelieves, he says, Anna mint. I'm free from you. I didn't want you to do this. I might have told you to, but that's your fault that you listen. I fear Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. So shaitan, who tries to tempt us to disobey Allah and follow in his footsteps, he believes in Allah. He knows Allah is the Lord of all the worlds. But he chose to disbelieve that one time or to deny that request to make sajda to Adam when Allah commanded it. And look, he was cursed for all of time. <laughs> Allah says, What means shaitan? It is Satan who threatens you with poverty. Every time you want to give, or every time you want to do something good, he comes and he threatens you that you're going to be poor, that you're not going to be able to provide for yourself or your family, so that you fear him, so that you rely on him and not Allah. He orders you to commit fahsha, all those evil, wrongdoing, immoral actions. Whereas Allah, he's promising you forgiveness from himself and a bounty. And Allah is all sufficient for his creatures' needs and all knower. Allah says, Ya ayyuha nas, antum al fuqara ila Allahi, wallahu huwa al ghani al hamid. Allah says, What means, O mankind? It is you who stand in need of Allah for everything. Everything we need Allah for. But Allah, He is rich. Allah is free, huwa al ghani, free of all needs, free of all wants, and He is worthy of all praise. But in Allah, ghani an al alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says what means, and Allah stands not in need of any of His creatures, any of the alameen, mankind or jinn, the angels or anything else that exists, Allah is not in need of any of it, or any of them. It does not decrease His dominion, His kingship, His lordship, one ounce, one speck, one atom's weight, if we were all to disbelieve. Look at what Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, He said, where Allah said, he quotes Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam saying, الَّذِي خَلَقَنِي وَهُوْ فَهُوَ يَهْدِينَ It is Allah, the one who guides me. It is Allah, the one who created me. And He is the one who guides me. وَالَّذِي هُوَ يُطْعِمَنِي وَيَسْقِينَ And He is Allah. It is Allah who feeds me and Allah who gives me drink. Yes, it may come because your parents worked, bought the food, mom cooked it or dad cooked it or whatever, and it was put on the table. None of that happened except through Allah. It is Allah who feeds us, it is Allah who gives us drink. And when I get ill and sick, yeah, I might go to the doctor. Yeah, I might go get some medicine. Yeah, I might take this shot. We might do those things. 
But it is Allah who writes that that cure should be one thing that cures us. The thing that cures us. So when I am sick, it is Allah who cures me. And it is Allah who will cause me to die. The one who can take my life by His permission. Who can cause our lives to end at the split of a second, even if you're healthy, young, able, strong, educated, it don't matter. Allah can take it. And He is the one who will cause us to come back to life, to stand before Him and question us with what we used to do. And it is Allah who I hope will forgive me my thoughts on the day of recompense, the day of resurrection. Our father Ibrahim alayhi salam, Hanif and Musliman, the father of this Tawheed that we're upon, the pure worship of Allah alone without partners, no shirk. These are the words of Tawheed, the total reliance and trust upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the words of the believers. Allah says, Wallahu a'lamu bi a'da'ikum wa kafa billahi waliyan wa kafa billahi nasira. Allah says what means Allah has full knowledge of your enemies. The enemies we fear, the enemies we plan to argue with or to fight with should they attack us. Allah is fully knowledgeable of them, but Allah is sufficient as a wali, as a protector for you and for us, and Allah is sufficient as a helper. وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا And put your trust in Allah. Rely upon Allah. He is all you need, but He has no need of us. You only benefit yourself. Put your trust in Allah, and sufficient is Allah as a wakil, as a trustee, as a disposer of affairs. His plan is better than our plan. His decree, better than what we could want for ourselves. What He wants is better even though in our eyes it may not look that way. Until you understand this, you're never going to live a life that Allah will be pleased with. Ibn Qudama, rahimahullah, he advised one of his brothers. He said, أَعْلَمْ أَنَّ مَنْ هُوَ فِي الْبَحْرِ عَلَى لَوْحٍ لَيْسَ بِأَحْوَجٍ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَإِلَى لُطْفِهِ مِنْ مَنْ هُوَ فِي بَيْتِهِ بَيْنَ أَهْلِهِ وَمَالِهِ Look at this phrase. And reflect upon what Ibn Qudamah, he advised his friend with, one of his brothers with, he said, no. And when the scholars, they write, and they begin with this no, like, I'lam, no, have knowledge, listen and pay attention. He said, no, the person who is in the ocean, on a plank of wood, that's the only thing holding him up above water. Any one of us who thinks of that person in the ocean, no land, no helicopters searching for him, no boats. He's in the middle of the water. He only got a piece of plank, a plank of wood, keeping him afloat, keeping him alive. Many of us would think that person is in trouble. But a person who's at home, surrounded by his family and his wealth, that this person is secure, this person is safe. He advised his brother, he said, know that a person in the middle of the ocean, only on a plank of wood to keep him propped up, that person is not more in need of Allah and His kindness and His generosity and His protection than the person who's at his home surrounded by his family and his wealth. None of us would think that. You see a person in the middle of the ocean, you think that dude is desperate. He's in dire straits. He's in need of help. I'm okay here. I'm secure here. If you don't understand this, if your heart does not comprehend this, you're not in a good place. Know that the person in the middle of the ocean on a plank of wood needs Allah just as much as the one who's in his home that's secure, that's protected, that's warm, that has his family and his friends and his property safeguarded and around him. They're both in need of Allah equally. Thus, if you comprehend this in your heart, he says, then your dependence upon Allah, then, you, then place your dependence upon Allah like the dependence of a drowning person. Like the dependence of one who is drowning. Place your dependence upon Allah your whole life as if you are that drowning person who does not know any means of safety except Allah. Trust in Allah. Rely upon Allah. Allah is the one we need. 
You can get this dua on the way out. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that Allah will grant whoever says this seven times in the morning or the evening, whatever he desires from this world will be granted to him. The one who says, Hasbi Allah. Allah is enough for me. Allah is sufficient for me. Allah is all I need. La ilaha illahu. He is the only one worthy of worship. He is the only one worthy of worship. <clears throat> عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتْ On him do I put my trust and reliance. وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ And he is the Lord of the Magnificent Throne. أَقُولُ قَلِّ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرَ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمْ اِدْعُ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبُكُمْ إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد ما dear brothers and sisters in Islam as Ramadan approaches we need to get ourselves ready do not wait for day one do not wait for the day before a we may not live to see it and this has to be a reality live every day like you're in the middle of the ocean and the only thing you have is your trusting and reliance upon Allah, keeping you afloat on a piece of wood. And if you do this, and your heart knows this, and you live your life like this, then you will be saved by Allah bi'ibnillahi ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, work on understanding this concept. So when Ramadan comes, you realize the grandeur of Allah letting us reach that month. Allahumma balighna Ramadan, may Allah allow us to see this month of Ramadan and live it and reap its fruits. Mm-hmm. Allah has no need for us. Allah has no need for us. No need for our prayers. No need for our sajda. No need for our rakua. Allah has no need for your qiyam. Allah has no need for your fasting. Allah has no need for you to make hajj or umrah. Allah has no need for your zakat. Zakat al-mal. Allah has no need for your sadaqah. Allah has no need for any of those things. Yet we do them, and we feel like we've done Allah a favor. We do them, and we feel like Jannah is already written for us. We give in charity, and we think like we are owed something back. Like we have done a favor to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by giving Him that charity. We seek Allah's refuge from being of those who think like this. Allah is not in need of those things we do. This only benefits us. It only benefits us. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we're in dire need of Allah. Whether you're strong or weak, young or old, healthy or sick, rich or poor, we're all in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our life and with and after our death, for our firmness to stay upon this deen and remain upon this deed, steadfast upon this deen. For our sustenance to be wholesome and pure, our rizq to not be one that involves riba or selling of haram. For our health, any time we have any of this, it is from Allah. Your hands, your sweat, your energy, your brains, your sleeplessness. That is not the reason why you have food on your table and you live in a nice house and you drive a good car and you have a good family or whatever. Those are all favors and blessings Allah gave you. They're all favors and blessings from Allah. So rely on Him and trust in Him. Remember this and you'll be from the most successful of people in these matters. And Abdullah ibn, Ab- ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma qala kuntu khalfa rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yawman faqala ya ghulam ihfad Allah yahfadak ihfad Allah tajidhu tujahak إذا سألت فاسأل الله وإذا استعنت فاستعن بالله واعلم أن الأمة إذا اجتمعوا على أن ينفعوك بشيء لم ينفعوك إلا بشيء قد كتب الله لك وإن اجتمعوا أن يضروك بشيء لم يضروك إلا بشيء قد كتبه الله عليك رفعت الأقلام وجفت الصحف رواه الترمذي وقال حديث حسن صحيح in this authentic hadith, we see from the Prophet we're going to see and be reminded that nothing can happen without Allah's permission. No good can come to you 
without Allah's permission. No harm can come to you without Allah's permission. We need Allah and He has no need of us. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him and his father. He said, <clears throat> one day I was riding behind the Prophet wasallam, and he said, oh young man, I want to teach you some words. He said, Allah, be mindful of Allah and Allah will protect you. Be mindful of Allah. You will find Allah in front of you. Not physically. Not physically. Again, go back to the Tawheed and the Aqeedah. All the way stemming this Tawheed that started from his prophets, from our father Ibrahim alayhi salam. You will not find Allah physically in front of you, nor inside of you, nor in every place. His knowledge is, his eyesight covers it all, his hearing is over all things. But Allah, he was stawa ala al-arsh, he ascended above his throne in a manner which suits his majesty after he created the heavens and the earth. So this is where Allah is. But what is this? This is a, 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 a metaphor for you to understand that Allah will be there to support you, to guide you, to help you. So be mindful of Allah and Allah will support you and guide you and help you. If you ask, only ask of Allah. If you seek help, only seek help from, your, from Allah, from your Creator. And know that if all of the nation, all of the people, all of the artillery, all of the power, all of the money were to come together to benefit you with something, it would not benefit you unless, unless Allah wrote it for you. And if all of the people, all of the money, all of the nations, all of the, the artillery, all of whatever you're looking for, if all of them were to come together to harm you, that they could not harm you except for what Allah wrote against you. The pens have been lifted and the pages have dried. Meaning, this was all decreed before you were even a thought to your parents. Or a thought to their parents. Or a thought to their parents' parents. قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَفْوًا قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ إن أول ما خلق الله القلم. The first thing Allah created was the pen. فقال له اكتب. He said to the pen, عز وجل. He told the pen write. فقال يا ربي وماذا اكتب. He said, the pen, عفوا, not he, the pen said to Allah, Oh my Lord, what shall I write? قال اكتب كل اكتب مقادير كل شيء حتى تقوم الساعة. He said, write down everything that will happen till the end of time. This was fifty thousand years before the creation. 50,000 years before the creation, all of what was written that we would choose to do was written and preserved. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, know that you're in need of Allah, that I'm in need of Allah, that all of the creation is in need of Allah, only and without any partner. Huwa al-Razzaq, He is the provider. When you need something to be provided for you, call upon your Lord with His name, al-Razzaq. <clears throat> he is the grantor of extensive provisions. The one who we just need this much to survive, but he's given us way more than we need and than we deserve. <laughs> he is our, our supporter, the one who supports us and gives us that protection. <laughs> he's our trustee, the one who will dispose of all of our affairs. And again, what Allah chooses to dispose of our affairs in this life is what is best for us. Even though we may think otherwise. He is the helper, our helper. He is the one who will help us in times of need. He is the one who helps us in times of comfort. It all goes back to him. And what did he say in the Quran? He said, and if you help me, then I will help you. This did not mean me and Allah needs help. If you aid this deen, if you learn the tawheed, if you learn the correct aqidah, if you learn the correct way to pray, and you teach this to others and the likes of those matters, then Allah will aid you and help you. When He said, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, in tansur Allah yansurukum. When He said, O you who believe, to the ones who want to be believers, if you help Allah, meaning His deen, be firm, be the truth, be told, that it be established and spread to the people, and people be called to Islam, then Allah will help you. Who Allah, who is samad, He is the self-sufficient of all, whom all the creatures need. He doesn't need to eat or drink, he doesn't need to use the restroom to sleep, to rest. But all the creatures are in need of what Allah provides for them. Al-Mannan, the beneficent bestower of bounties. Tremendous in giving, again, giving more and more than we need. Way more than we deserve. Hu al-Kareem, 
He is the generous one who is akram. He is generous, al kareem to all of creation. Even the disbelievers, even the ones who don't believe in him, even the ones who associate partners with him, he still gives them ways for food and protection and clothing and living and health. Walakin huwa akram. On top of that, he is the most generous to those who believe. He is the most generous to the believers. <clears throat> never doubt this and never deny it. Because one day, Ta'ala, when two feet are in Jannah, you'll realize that all of these attributes belong to him. Who when Muhammad, the trustworthy, the ever watchful witness, you can rely that he knows what good you do. You can rely that he knows you're struggling. You can rely he knows you're suffering. You can rely that he knows you need him, that you need his help. You can rely that he knows why you do what you do. And you can rely that he knows that everything you're going about everything that you're going through. Who will hide the ever living Al Qayyum, the self subsisting, the one whom everything depends on, the one who sustains and the one who protects all that exists. Allah is all you need. Allah is all you need. Yes, we love our parents, we love our spouses, we love our children, we love our brothers and sisters. But we don't need except what Allah wants us to have. All Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all we need without a doubt. And the one by which all is attained, if He wills it. So let us realize this once and for all. Stop inflating your egos to think that you're needed by others. Because every one of us can be replaced by another human to do something. But Allah can never be replaced. Allah can never be replaced. Our egos puff us up to the point where we think we're needed by others or our hard work is why we have what we have. You're fooling yourself. You're the true fool if you think this. Allah is all we need. For every aspect of our life, Allah is all we need. For every aspect of the Akhirah, Allah is all we need. So we ask Allah to make this a reality of what we believe and what we live upon so that we worship Him the way He deserves to be worshipped. And we humble ourselves, have that humility, and know every day of our lives that even if we're surrounded by comfort to our eyes, or to our minds, or to our hearts, that a person drowning in the middle of the ocean is not more in need of you in your stages of comfort. Allahumma khil al-Muslimina wal-Muslimat, al-Mu'minina wal-Mu'minat, al-Ahyaa minhum al-Amwat, إنك أنت سميع قلب المجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبا على دينك سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلاما على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين